It's funny how a person who should be a, like a symbol for white people somehow has all sorts of sexual de- like Leonardo da Vinci was into scat. Just another scheme! <laughs> I am now the alpha, and the alpha doesn't have the mission. The one place where like a loser white man on his way out can find salvation, and like this seeping into makes me hate. Shh. We shall take away your rails, he says, and built a wall in front of him so that Henry couldn't get out of the tunnel anymore. Communism is not the answer. If you have nothing to offer, the first thing you're going to want to do is destroy the system that puts a numerical valuation on people based on their usefulness. When the, the narrative started to unravel, Stephen Colbert came out with this, in this country, we all drank the poison and it felt good. These people that want to feel like they know everything, the vengeful thoughts that people have. I would never put kids on film like that. This is like, uh, well, speaking of Jay Dyer, this is like the vision that the WEF has for us in the future. See, I'm in this hole. I'm in my little cubicle. I have space to move around. I can go from left to right. I don't know if you can see that on the screen. I'm not hungry, and my health is good. And they're scanning me biometrically to make sure. Oh, and oh. it's daytime. I don't think I would disagree with this guy. I th my hunch is that a lot of this is just highbrow shit on <clears throat> young people for being on the computer too much, which, you know, whatever. And, um, but ultimately, if you can't talk about black crime statistics, the other thing is he just, I don't think he gets the joke. So it's those two things. I don't think he gets the joke and I don't think he can talk about black crime statistics without saying the word teleological. Well, the thing about black crime is that it's teleological in nature. It's a uh, uh, dissertanian uh, opium and around de Biro and black crime uh, denouement at the end of the day. Do something to help the lost boys find themselves. And making a pretty picture is not gonna help anybody find themselves. Except for like one guy with a lisp and a, a uh, nose piercing and a messenger bag. He'll find himself looking at the pretty picture. But that's not gonna help, you're not gonna help millions, hundreds of thousands of people yeah. find themselves. And I would take, whatever he's got to say, I would take it more seriously if he was squatting two plates. <laughs> Or just have your sons have your sons squat two plates. I don't think we're and lost. I think if, we're found. I don't think like the whole. I'm, I'm extremely found. Yeah. And anytime I talk to somebody, I'm, I would like to, I would like them to be more found by the end of the conversation. I'm a lifetime Mensa member now. For real. Yeah, I took a, I took the Mensa IQ test, and then I paid fifteen hundred dollars for the lifetime membership. Yeah. <laughs> but you do, you do have to pass an IQ test, which, my, I would assume is like bare minimum. Yeah. I don't think they're they're really testing your IQ all that much to get yeah. into Mensa. As long as you can are smart enough to like make it to page 10 of the test, they probably are like, "Oh, yeah, you can just pay pay right here and you can be you're in. You're in. You made it. You made it, buddy." I mean, we should probably do we, we should start a high IQ society ourselves. I'm on, I'm on the newsletter. Yeah. And the first thing is a, like the, the cadence of the posting and the structure of it is straight out of Reddit top um, masking debate. Oh, man. But they're using words that are like thesaurus.com words. Yeah. Like I've seen a plethora of this and it, the inconsistencies with my notion. Like it's, it sounds like a Batman villain trying to talk about co masking. That's crazy. That was my first like official exposure to other Mensa users, other Mensa members. So yeah, if you want to join Mensa, just sign up for Quora.com and you'll basically be in the same thing. There's the destructive impulse and the, the, the creative impulse. Destruction is the creativity of um, people who are malign, maligned, people who cannot, people who are helpless and can't uh, have no agency and can't do things the way they, dis the way they create is by destroying. And that's where the, the leftist impulse to see cities burn and all that stuff comes from. First off, you have to kill something perfect. So a white, a white horse. This is not a joke. This is how you, can, this is how you get, um, you find something perfect in nature, something beautiful that uh, blows your mind and then destroy it and crush it in your hand like this. And you'll succeed. Communism's a good one. It's a mental virus that's uh, hard to shake. Sometimes it can seem like a low blow to Pick, pick apart an idea by like psych psychologizing your opponent, but the communism stuff is so tied up with um, like entitlement and the, the most, the most resol highly resolved communists are the ones who are the most aware of their own worthlessness to society. Because cat what capitalism does 
in, inefficiently and poorly, admittedly, is it rewards people for being useful to society. Um, so you definitely, the first, if you if you have nothing to offer, the first thing you're going to want to do is destroy the the system that um, sort of puts a, a numerical valuation on people based on their usefulness. So no, communism is not the answer. It's the answer if you want to uh, live in a gulag, but it's really not a good idea. This dude's swag is revolting. So this is the story of the events that led up to the January 6th Capitol riot. The, the, the just that content is like riding the line and exposing crazy people. Like there's crazy people everywhere. If there were, if there was a, a parallel, if it was like the Biden family, and there were kids, like I would never I would never put kids on film like that. That's that's revolting. Yeah. That's like a sickening like low. Even if even if the kids saying the craziest thing you've ever heard. Putting it so that for all of time, these people that want to feel like they know everything, click the fan, oh, look how crazy, oh, for the poor children. He made it, look at these poor children suffering, but they're, they're white supremacist children, so I hope they end up poor. The sick, like the vengeful thoughts that people have, and, and putting kids on film so that people can like channel their, their vengeance into the Trump family. Will Ozempic ruin Thanksgiving? This Holy guy's shit. gotta gotta go. When the co- stuff started the narrative started to unravel and it was it was clear to the more present people on the left that they had gone too far and that they had had done like serious damage to their credibility and likability with normal people mm -hmm. where Stephen Colbert came out with this this unhinged not unhinged but like a, a a rant that was calculated to make it seem like even in their excess of um, bitterness and and uh, self-righteousness that they were still in the right. And he was like, um, in this country, we all drank the poison and it felt good. It felt good to be upset. Like you, like uh, trying to, trying to roll back yeah, yeah, this, yeah. all this they've been doing. Uh, He's the worst man. Stephen Colbert's the worst. Did you ever see Chapo Trap House had Tim Heidecker on? No, I didn't. That was an incredible one. All that stuff is, a lot of it's wrong. A lot of it's stuff that's just impossible due to constraints of like reality, yeah. but there is a degree of intelligence in left-wing politics type stuff. Yeah. Like there are people who are like, they're, they're, they're under the, they're in the grips of some ideological gremlin, but they do like Slavov, Slav, 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 Slav Zizek is like hyper intelligent in certain ways, but he's, he's the, he's the victim of this like, gremlin in his head that's making him think that like certain things are important slash possible when they're not which is fine like i don't i wouldn't want to i would never want to debate or argue with somebody like that like it's just i don't i don't think there's a merit in it it's fine that's fine that they exist whatever but my point being that like chapo trap house talking circles around making tim heidecker look like a brainlet he was the, they were say, they were saying all this high tier left winger stuff like stuff that kind of if you if you buy into their premises makes sense and is intelligent and tim was just sitting there like a like a cuck like he was sitting there like the guy watching his girlfriend get or something like nodding his head and going yeah that makes a lot of sense like <laughs> it was <fun. laughs> is there a clip of it it was really funny this guy you've seen this I've seen the actual animation. If you want to understand why animation looks the way it does, it's because anybody who animates, and this includes everybody, learns about the 12 principles of animation, Disney's 12 principles of animation. Squash and stretch, anticipation. So if I'm gonna run this way, I go like this. Yeah. Pew. This is like the law, the law of animation. This is just from Disney in the 40s. But the end result of people dogmatically adhering to this without thinking about it is that everything, the, the ultimate stage of all Western animation is DreamWorks face. That's where those laws lead to. Yeah, oh my God, dude. <laughs> and for, like, for this to, inf like, games are, games are supposed to be the domain of losers. Like it's, it's like the one place where like a loser, beta male, the white man, on his way out of civilization can find refuge and salvation. In his video. Is in the first person shooter. Yeah. And like this seeping into 
that makes me hate this who this guy and his, who's definitely in a polyamorous in a polycule. There's all there's all sorts of uh, I think sexual rumors about Marcus Aurelius. One rumor that he had a male gladiator, his wife, and then he cut the gladiator's head off mid inner. It's just fake. It's funny how a person who should be a it was like a symbol for white people somehow has all sorts of sexual de like Leonardo da Vinci was into scat. I didn't know that. It's not, it's cause it's not true. Oh, Chris, but it's weird how those rumors, those rumors get made. I, I, if you, if you read uh meditate, the meditations, I, it's hard to imagine the same person who wrote, who wrote that cutting off the head of a gladiator. Who's his wife for blood play. Okay. This is the only way to, if you're masculine or you have a masculine impulse, the only way for it to be excusable is to, to don the soldier hat, like, ironically, right? Like, look at his, this body language right here. That wave specifically. What is he trying to, is he trying to lure a six-year-old into his okay. Subaru? When do, you, when do you ever wave at somebody like that? Yo. It's me, Commander Carl. Don't mind me. But, like... You can tell he's got, he's at least got some testosterone. Like he has a beard. He presents in a in a masculine enough way. Like he wants to. He's not wearing a, a you know, he's not dressed like a gothic Lolita or like most people would be. This is the type, <laughs> this is his kind of his deal. Like he's unabashedly fat, but his his arms are he's got some muscle at least. Yeah. He's in this house with fire on it or whatever. For him to have a career and to like see, uh, navigate the modern world, he has to do things like, like this. Hey, this sure that Greeks and the Romans were butt each other all the time. I don't buy it. You know who's doing that? Nigerians. How about that? They were doing. How about how about they were doing that in Ethiopia? All right. And uh, oh yeah, they were doing that in Israel too. Suck it. You want to rewrite history? How about this? Uh, they were all doing naked butt dance party in Israel about 6,000 years ago. How about that? They were doing that in China, actually. In China, in ancient China, they used to wear bikinis and suck all day. How about that? All these silly- You know what? In the, um, the, in the, in the, in the Torah, I actually read a copy of the Torah that was different from, it was older. And, uh, David from David, you know, David from David and Goliath, his dying words were, I'm a coward. Really? Yeah. <laughs> to biblical David, the star David, his, 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 when he was dying, he put on a pair of satin panties, and he was sucking. He was sucking on a um, a piece of clay that resembled a dick, and he and he said, "I'm a coward." <laughs>